Jerry Jones. Good morning, sir. Let's go. All right. I was wanted to give you a little bit of space and see if you could tell us anything or wanted to share any stories about Gavin Escobar as we heard of the unfortunately tragic passing last night. Oh, it's just tragic. And uh, uh, I personally enjoyed my time that he was with the Cowboys, uh, uh, the occasions that we had to say hello and visit. And, and um, that's just uh, tragic. And uh, uh, he obviously uh, was doing things and, and living a life that uh, he enjoyed uh, doing and uh, uh, to be uh, engaged in the kind of activities that he wanted to be. I'm thankful for that much. And uh, But it's just so sad, so young. Jerry, on on what this Cowboys team is currently doing, you're getting to the quarterback with like four defensive linemen more often than I think I've seen in quite some time. Why do you suppose that is? Is it is it coaching, just adding more talent to that line? What is What do you think it is that's getting you the opportunities to get there with just four? Well, I think you've named it. Uh, I think the scheme, uh, certainly uh, the execution of the scheme has everything to do with coaching. And, and then again, uh, of course, the, the, the players that can, uh, can uh, do that and execute uh, and have the, if you will, the, we call it the quick twitch, the, the quickness, the, uh, at the same time, I have enough length uh, to uh, uh, also be effective pass rushers. Uh, we made a, a key decision when we uh, decided to, uh, let's say, uh, uh, not go with Randy. Uh, Randy would be is a Galloway, a Gregory, I mean. Randy Gregory is... Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> he's... he's uh, uh, a really top player, but we ended up getting three players for what we would have had Randy for, and that's uh, exciting. And that in line was what I'm going to add, rotation, uh, keeping them fresh. Uh, that's a big deal in uh, your interior and your fronts. And we would happen to be, uh, uh, that's one of the strengths of our team is our numbers inside as well as the outside pass rush. With with that conversation, I know there are a lot of people in, in, involved in that conversation. But did you go to Dan Quinn and say, "Do we need this guy, or can you do it with these other guys?" Is that part of the conversation? Well, no, uh, I decided that uh, uh, we were going too much on that guy. Uh, we could have three other guys uh, better. Uh, that's where that logic went. I didn't have to go to anybody on that. Now, obviously. You know, the Cowboys have been hit really hard with injuries, but I believe it was yesterday, maybe the day before, C.D. Lamb said, if there is a positive, one of the positives is everybody counted the team out and they've all kind of bonded over that and maybe become a little bit closer because everyone has had to step up. Have you seen that as a possible potential positive to some of these injuries? Oh, I think it is. Uh, to address uh, this adversity, losing back early, so early, uh, but to address that from within, uh, which meant everybody step it up a notch, everybody execute a little more of a mental uh, attentiveness, uh, of physical, everybody add a percent or two or 5% to everything they do positively. Watch your mistakes, uh, uh, just awareness. Uh, get on our game a little more to overcome. You know, I'm, I'm going to use this analogy. We've seen uh, uh, in our physical makeup, we've seen uh, uh, handicaps or we've seen uh, some areas that uh, have diminished physically. Well, you make up for that. The body's a wonderful thing, and you make up for it with another uh, trait in your makeup. And uh, so uh, I think that's what you're seeing in this team, and a big part of that would be uh, just to resolve, band together. Uh, we can make it. Uh, uh, Dak gives us a lot of uh, things to look forward to. Tyron Smith gives us a lot of things to look forward to. Let's 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 hold the fort or let's uh, get the job done while these guys aren't here because we could have them all when we get to the playoff time if we do a good job to get there. Jerry, on paper, the Cowboys look much better than Washington. Is there a specific player or anything on Washington's team that worries you? 
Yeah, the the the, the uh, thing that worries me, not a specific player, is the general defensive front, and uh, it is outstanding. And they have uh, as good a personnel as I've ever seen put together, and that's uh, that's a challenge. And so uh, uh, our guys, especially our offensive line and, and our blocking schemes and uh, uh, get our run uh, going the way we had it going the other night so we can balance it out and, and uh, give us a chance passing-wise. Uh, uh, all of that's going to be a challenge against this team. That's their strength. Now, after this uh, game is over, we saw Dak throwing the ball lightly uh, at practice. Is there a strong possibility that he is able to play next week? Yeah, I don't know. I, I just don't know. I don't know that anybody does. Uh, uh, you'll have to see how uh, the strength goes. And no one knows that. To, uh, uh, to try and, and, and evolve. Uh, he's obviously, if anybody in the world can, can uh, get back out there, he's going to get back out there. And, uh, he's a major part of, of uh, what we're all about. He's a major part of it daily. He's a major part of it out there right now. But uh, he, it's important that... Uh, uh, we all understand that uh, he'll he'll give it ever go. Uh, what is really good, though, is that we've got somebody that's playing excellent in Cooper, excellent, and he's doing a super job at the position. And uh, so, boy, that gives us a little leeway here. D- does it ever give you any, especially if the Cowboys are to win again this weekend, does that give you any pause, even for just a second, that Cooper Rush keeps winning and maybe... He keeps rocking with this team. No, no. All it does is uh, tell me that uh, uh, we're in great shape at the quarterback position. And that's important. And you can't be in great shape unless you've got somebody that can, uh, you've got good backup situations. That bothered me real when we lost Dak so early uh, when it first happened. Boy, I thought, uh, what what have we you know what have we got here? Uh, but uh, we went within. Uh, we called on Cooper. Uh, we we uh, turned out here as we're in good shape at backup quarterback. And we're all feeling the rush, Jerry. All right. So when Gallup is out there, is finally out there, and I don't know if you can give us any update on on him at the moment. But when he's finally back out there, is there a part of you that's like, hey, I want to get the ball to the guy that we're paying, or are you kind of like, you know what, I don't care. This Noah Brown kid keeps making grabs. No, I don't care. I don't care at all. Uh, uh, matter of fact, uh, it uh, it should happen, frankly, that the guys that you're paying should open it up for the guys that you're not paying. Okay. If you so, in uh, to, since we're in that vernacular and in that area, of paying or not paying, and uh, that that's as it should be. Now those guys uh, uh, have. Uh, uh, is you, you've got to be excellent. You've got to run your routes perfectly so that uh, at the right distance and can make your cuts at the right time so that you can clear it out for the other guy. We hadn't uh, had that, uh, been getting that that much in the past. We're getting it now. Now, a couple of the guys you are paying missed last week in Dalton Schultz and Michael Gallup. What are the status updates on Schultz, Gallup, and maybe even Connor McGovern? I'm, I'm as I sit here. Uh, but we, we've got more to go here this week. But as I sit here, I think they'll play. All three of them? Well, I didn't know what you said, but two. Oh, Schultz, Gallup, and McGovern. Uh, I'm not for sure about it. I sure, uh, feel as good about McGovern. We'll see where that goes. Okay, good news to hear. Sorry, you- I, just, I just heard two. It's so not- I wasn't listening. Well, sometimes we work with yeah. Mike. I get it. It happens sometimes. <laughs> now, Jerry, we saw. I think we all saw what happened last night with uh, with Tua, and there's a, a lot of concern and discussion going on with that today. And we all saw what hey, happened. Guys. Yes, sir. Back, back with you. Okay. Last I night got we disconnected for me. Well, we're all good to have you back here, Jerry. We saw last last uh, last night Tua had a, a very scary moment uh, in the game, and, and that happened on Sunday, too. And then there's this w- small window for him to be okay. I'm kind of curious how much the responsibility is on the player versus team doctors to let you know that maybe I can't go. And then how much pressure is on these guys to to play through these kinds of things? Yeah, I didn't say it. 
uh, uh, so I won't speak to it. That specific incident, I'm aware of it, but I didn't see it. Uh, but but uh, uh, the premier, premier, I've never been uh, as acute as it is right now as on the player safety, and uh, uh, the uh, especially in the area of concussion. And there's no there's no equivocation. Matter of fact, it really doesn't even make any sense when you think about how uh, the, the, uh, the impact that uh, he has at the position as well as the player on the team. Uh, so uh, you want to do the right thing there. And uh, this thing has uh, uh, just progressed so much over the 30 years that I've been involved in pro football and the, the years when I played it. There was a time where, actually, there's been multiple times where it's felt like Washington and Dallas was the premier rivalry in the NFL. Obviously, you look back at the early 90s and, like, that would be deciding, you know, who is going to win Super Bowls and the like. Do you still feel like the Dallas-Washington rivalry matters? Well, I do, and you knew that'd be my answer. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. as, Nate New- as Nate Newton, the great Nate Newton once said, let's give them some capital punishment. <laughs> uh, that is the nation's capital. So, Jerry, uh, when it comes to you doing these interviews, owners and general managers, a lot of them don't do interviews. Um, yeah, I got it. Got it, guys. You okay. Got, you got I'm back. You got me? Okay. Um, I was talking about owners and general managers. You come on our station twice. Uh, you know, you, you talk a lot about your organization. It really helps the media. It helps us talk about the Dallas Cowboys, get more insight. How come other owners or general managers, because you know so many of them around the league and around the, the world that are in other sports, how come they don't talk uh, about their team like you do? Well, uh, I would say uh, in the case of the general manager, uh, he uh, has to uh, has to be sensitive and has a, a, an accounting uh, to a higher, uh, uh, let's say, grade, a higher grader in his owner. Uh, and uh, the owner generally uh, has to have deference to the general manager relative to talking about players or deference to the coach. Well, that's one of the positives of our structure. We don't have those issues. So the, uh, the chain that you have there between the owner and the coach, and if you even will, the players. I talk to players when uh, a coach might not know that. Uh, I talk to uh, uh of the other teams when the owner of the other team uh, of the other clubs might not know that. Well, I know who's talking to everybody and I know what they're saying. And so that gives us better insight. Jerry, this is more of a, uh, a general Jerry Jones question, but a friend of mine and I were having a conversation, big Cowboys fans whole life. And we were just kind of going back and forth the other night. And he said, Jerry just needs one more Super Bowl." And then he can kick up his feet and relax. And my take is that Jerry Jones is too addicted to the NFL to not have be both feet in at all times. Which one of us is right? Is another Super Bowl enough to satisfy Jerry Jones? I, I don't know. I'd love to be at peace. Uh, I say that smiling. <laughs> I'd love to have peace. Uh, I'd love to have peace just in general. Uh, but there, uh, as the old boy's song says, there ain't no peace. And uh, I've never had a time when I didn't feel like I uh, had an urgency about doing it, uh, whatever it is. Uh, certainly a Super Bowl is the thing that a check can't write to get. Uh, I, I know how to uh, compete or risk or, or have uh, uh, emphasis uh, I'd rather spend it over here than spend it over there financially. Uh, I know how to do that. But the Super Bowl is uh, only one gets to win it. There's a lot of people going for it. And there's a lot of uh, ambiguity. There's a lot of things that go can go wrong uh, in your plans going toward a Super Bowl. So it's probably the most difficult thing that I've ever tried to do. 
is uh, relative to other things I've done with my life. And so uh, it's a challenge, and therein lies the secret. That's how come you want it so bad, want to try for it so bad, want to do everything that you possibly can do to get it. Uh, If I thought there was one person out here that could get you a Super Bowl, there is not. Player, coach, manager, what? There is not. All you got to do is look around and see how few have gotten them and see how few there are that get them and how many they've gotten or haven't gotten. Belichick's about as good as I've seen. But uh, the bottom line is that's that's the goal and of anything I touch, well, other than my family and those things for all of us, anything I touch, it's the highest priority I have. Well, we appreciate the insight as always. Good, sir. Always looking forward to Fridays, hoping for another victory on Sunday. We'll catch up with you next week. I agree. I agree. And that is the Super Bowl. Uh, but all there is is a zero in on Sunday. Let's get these this Washington team. Perfect. There you I go. Agree. Thanks, guys.